Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog, Tony Torrance here. Um, today we're going to tie a little carp fly, I call the carp collar. It's a uh, fly I came up with last summer uh, after getting some new materials. And it's got the new squirmito tail on it and uh, some of the uh, new Cohen carp dub. And uh, one other product, uh, Real Skin Silicone Sheeting, um, which is an older product, but uh, I put it in here. And then the last thing is the uh, new uh, Grizzly Soft Tackle Marabou Patches from Hairline, which is a really neat product. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, this hook is tied on a uh, 2457. And um, TMC. And it's a heavy wire hook. It's got a bend to it. And the reason is to get it when it flips over with the weight on it, it stands straight up. I'll show you that as we get going. Uh, I'm going to lay a little base of thread here. Get a set of brass eyes. These are medium brass eyes on a size uh, 6. I'm going to set them back just a little bit to uh, leave enough room for um, the material, the dubbing that we're going to put on here. I'm going to get that started, put a little zappa gap on the underside here to uh, reinforce it a little bit. And then we'll do the usual figure eights to um, secure this. A couple wraps around, and then I normally do a little up and over deal, and then around again, and then a few more crisscrosses just to finish it off and a couple more wraps around the base. And then I want to bring my thread back out of the way and get some uh, 0 0.025 lead and I'm going to start right at the point above the point of the hook and bring this right up in behind the, um, the eyes. Let's see, we'll let's finish that right there. That one didn't break off exactly like I planned it, but we'll uh, we'll get her out of there. And then I'm going to secure this lead in place. Now with this weight the way it is, the head or the uh, lead eyes in the lead, when it hits the water, it's going to sink down and it'll sand stand um, straight up like this. So as you pull it across the bottom, this tail is going to wiggle. And uh, we also do it in a little olive green colored pattern. And I'll give you the patterns for both of them. First thing I'm going to do now is take um, a little uh, UV tan ice dub and put this over the thread because these um, squirmito um, um, bodies, tails, whatever you'd like to call them, um, do not do well with glues or um, tightly pulled thin thread. It will cut right through them. So we use a little dubbing over the top just to keep them from um, cutting off or breaking. So I'll just kind of get that started right in there. And then come back and get that secured. I got a little carried away with my dubbing. So I'll just remove the excess there and back off one. Finish that up. And you want to secure this so that the, the uh, tail is kicked off a little bit towards you because when you start wrapping the, the body itself it will um, want to twist a little bit. So I'm going to put a little more pressure on here and just really get this in place so it doesn't move so much. Okay. Next I'm going to take a strip of the uh, natural, it's like latex but it's actually silicone and um, cut it so that there's a little slant here to tie in. then bring my thread up in position here. I'm 
And then I'll just start working forward and this creates a segmented body just by overlapping each of the pieces. And I'll come up a little bit. I'll tie over this, but that's okay. I'm just going to uh, just help secure it. This stuff's pretty tough, the silicone, and it's not going to um, wear out like regular latex would for you. And then I'm going to cut the tail to length, and you can leave the tail as long as you want. There's enough to wiggle as we're uh, pulling it through the water and uh, on the bottom. So the next thing I'm going to tie in is some barred uh, Crazy Legs Golden Yellow Pearl Flake from Hairline. And I want these to um, angle upward because the fly will ride like this. So I'll just lay this in here. get those in position and turn them a little bit. Okay. And I'll come over to the other side and take another set of three and do the same thing. So there's all of our legs. You can trim those to the length you like. The next thing I'm going to use is these um, uh, Grizzly Soft Hackle Marabou patch. And it has Marabou in it. It has your hackles, um, everything you would need. And it comes in olive tan, natural, and brown. And there may be another color, but I'm shooting from the hip here. So I'm going to pull out one of the hackles and prepare it. Just need a couple turns of this, so I'll just tie that in here on top. Fold it back. And then break off the excess. Grab her with my hackle pliers and just fold this hackle back so I can make a nice neat collar. There's a couple turns there. Get my fingers over that to get it pulled back. Okay, so there's what we're looking at so far. Next, I'm going to use my dubbing twirler and some Cohen's carp dub and blaze orange for the head. This stuff, I'm going to make a dubbing loop first, making sure to come over it a couple times to cinch those that uh, thread together so I have a nice tight um, loop. Get my the uh, twirler here and just a little bit of dubbing wax. A little goes a long way. I just want to grab those fibers. I don't want a ton of this in my dubbing. This stuff's real sticky. So I'm going to take these fibers and just start pulling off just a little bit of time. And you can see there's little rubber legs in that as well. And I'm going to start at the top here and lay this in. And just a little bit goes a long way. So I'll just can you continue working down the thread. And this is where the dubbing wax is so nice because it grabs the uh, fibers and kind of holds them in place. And just pull a little at a time and work your way down. And then I will spin this. And I just want it to spin a little bit so it tightens up a bit. And then I'm going to come in with my bodkin and just start pulling some of these fibers out and some of the rubber legs. That's why I don't tighten it all the way up to begin with. Otherwise you'll end up spinning your all your rubber legs into the material. And I'll give it a little more twist and do it again. Just a little at a time. 
it's worth uh, taking your time to get the effect that you want in those rubber legs. You've got them in there. You might as well take advantage of having them. So, and I want this stuff to bug out real good. And that should be enough there. Start turning this and kind of um, pulling it back as I come forward. I'm going to go over the eyes once, twice, over this eye once, twice. Now it's starting to look like a moppy mess, but we'll get all that worked out. I'm going to go around this thread a couple times, bring it up around the eye. Make a couple more turns around the eye. Cut that thread. Pull this stuff back and make a nice neat head. And then I'll put a whip finish on this. Normally I don't glue on video because it takes time and you guys know how to glue flies, but I want to show you a, a little trick here. I just take my glue and I put a pretty good drop on there. And now it's getting in the eye, right? If you take your fingernail and just pop this fly once, twice, it kicks the material out, kicks the excess glue out of the eye of the hook. So then I'll take a little Velcro here and comb this bad boy out and it'll still look like an absolute disaster, which is okay. It's buggy. It's really buggy. And when it gets pulled back, it's going to swim really nicely. So you've got all these little legs. And if the legs look a little long to you in some spots, you can just come in and trim one, two here, you know. Get them to where you want them. If there's some sticking out really long. And that is the uh, carp collar. Thanks for watching uh, the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog, and have a great day.